the first thing I'm going to show you is something very simple. You may be able to see here itself. Two pieces of straw. They can be of same length or slightly different length, but approximately the same size. And they are joined here to any kind of piece of rubber or foam. In this case, we've actually used a waste material. This is your Hawaii chapel. A piece of that, a waste piece of that has been cut to this shape just so that we can stick tape to the straws and stick it here. And you'll notice that there are two pieces of straw. Now, typically, if we had to drink water or get water out of a straw, we would suck from a straw. But what happens here when you use two straws? Let's have some fun. So I'll take a glass of water and put one straw inside and suck from one of the straws. Probably don't notice much happening. If you take a closer look, you may be able to see some water rise in the straw that's submerged in the water. But nothing really happening. No fun. When I blow, nothing at all happens. So it's possible that this straw just doesn't like me. So I can try the same thing from the other straw. Again, I'll suck. There's no difference other than maybe slight difference in the sound. And then I can also see what happens if I blow. You get a beautiful misty spray that comes out. And as I can see from the camera in front of me, some of the water droplets are on the lens of the camera. So that makes it even more fun. You can play this during Holi or during the summer or whatever time of year, especially now in the rainy season. And have quite a lot of fun with a spray like this. And it's again, very simple materials. But why is it happening? Why is it that if I blow from one of the straws, I get absolutely nothing. Whereas if I blow from the other one, a beautiful spray. If you look closely enough, you will notice that the two straws are positioned slightly differently. One of the straws is fully open. Yeah? It's fully open with nothing blocking it. The other straw is about half open. The straw that's fully open is actually blocking half the other straw. And only if we blow through the straw that is half blocked, do we actually get the spray. We don't get it if we blow through the fully open straw. So that's again a very interesting phenomenon. You can think about why this is happening. Think about what happens when a river goes through a narrow valley, for example, after being quite wide, when it goes through a narrow valley, what's actually happening? to the river? Is the speed of the water increasing, decreasing? What's happening? You'll probably realize that when you have a small nozzle, we do that even in our garden pipe for the water to go a larger distance, we close part of the pipe. And that's because the speed of water actually increases or speed of air in this case increases because the same amount of air has to come out through a much smaller hole. So the speed increases and very interesting thing happens with liquids or gases when the speed reduces, when the speed increases, is that the pressure actually reduces. So that's what's happening here. The pressure right above this straw is reducing. This straw is already submerged in the water. So since a low pressure is created on top, first the air gets sucked into the low pressure, not only from this straw, from all around in the atmosphere, but also from here. And once the air gets displaced from the straw, the water also gets sucked up. So that's almost exactly like how if you were to suck from here and drink water, you're actually removing the air first. And then because the straw is submerged in water, the water comes out from here and you're able to drink it. In this case, we are not drinking it. We are blowing from here, reducing the pressure here and the water comes up. And once the water is here, the air continues to blow and breaks those into smaller and smaller droplets. And so you get a beautiful misty spray, much like your hairdresser spraying your hair to make it wet. You get a similar spray here that you've made very much at home. So we notice this type of phenomenon in a lot of things in our day-to-day -day life. You'll notice if a calendar is hanging on the wall and you have the fan on, 
the calendar is not sticking to the wall it actually comes closer to the fan and that's again because the wind speed from top in this area has increased so the pressure has reduced so anything gets attracted to a region of lower pressure so the calendar or the curtain actually goes towards a place that's more windy and you can do various experiments with this try blowing next to a candle that is lit you will notice the flame goes towards where you are blowing rather than away and uh, various interesting experiments you're given safety instructions at railway stations stay away from the platform when a fast train is going by because there's possibility of you get sucking getting sucked in towards the train if you're too close to it again the same phenomenon and aeroplanes fly by the same phenomenon by how their wings are shaped the wind on top goes faster than the wind at the bottom of the wing so there's a low pressure created on top a high pressure at the bottom so that's how planes are able to fly the cricket ball swings because there's a difference in the type of shininess on both the sides so you see players shining the ball all the time and so there are various applications to this phenomenon